Space to fly. Yeah, he sees your dreams and estates. All of my hair would disappear. See that my power would grow like the. Yes, yes, so hairless here. Today we're back with another patron request and I'm extremely excited for this one. It's a song from a Disney film from 2021 called Encanto. I watched it a few days ago, I enjoyed it. It must be said that this song, We Don't Talk About Bruno, was head and shoulders above the other songs in the film. I've listened to the song a fair few times over the past few days and it really is great. Some bits admittedly not as good as the others, but overall I think it's really, really clever. I could do a two hour video just talking about that song alone because there's so much going on at such a high level in it. I'll show a quick snippet of my favourite part or a few different bits actually to show the variety that's in this song. Each clip can't be more than four seconds due to copyright. They even put me in it. Look at my hair. It's getting me incredibly excited for this to see what voice play do. I'm also a little bit anxious in case my brain kind of goes into overload and implodes. Let's hope that doesn't happen. This is an arrangement by Lane. I watched the film to get some context for this song for this request. In short, it's about a magical family where each family member has their own special power. Bruno is a shunned family member who had the power of foresight. An inquisitive family member was asking about him, what happened to him, and the response came in the form of this song. For anyone who doesn't know the song, I really do recommend watching it, even if you don't watch the whole film. Wow, okay, so the original song has 584 million views on YouTube, so it's clearly very, very popular. And last thing, it's featuring Ashley Diane. This is my first time seeing a woman singing with voice play. I don't know anything about her, so let's see how this all comes together. Whoa. We don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. We don't talk about Bruno. Sorry, mi vida go. Bruno says it looks like oh, rain. What did he tell us? In doing so, he floods my brain. Married in a hurricane. What a joyous day, but anyway. We don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. We don't talk about Bruno. Hey, Bruno living pure, Bruno stuttering or stumbling. I can always hear him sort of muttering or mumbling I associate him with the sound of falling sand It's a heavy lift with the gift so humbling Always let the boy land the family fumbling Crippling of prophecies that couldn't understand Do you understand? Seven foot frame Rats along his back When he calls your name It up Fades to fly Yeah, he sees your dreams and feasts on your screen Okay, this is a completely changed feel now at this point. It's one of the clips I showed in the introduction. He told me that the life of my dreams... Alright, this is nuts. I don't need to pause for copyright reasons, but I'm going to for my own mental well-being. There's so, so much going on. Yeah, let's, let's go over and talk about what we've heard so far. If you don't want to hear any analysis, go to the timestamp here. So we're in the same key as the original song. That always makes things a bit easier for comparisons. We don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno. Immediately though, in voice plays version, we're hit with this juicy chord progression. Subtle and quick, but it immediately caught my attention. Bruno, no, no, no. On those ooze there. Cue Sahelis from the future. So Ellie sings this. 
He sings the word no each time on the beat, but he also changes note in between. So each no is two notes. This creates a little lagging effect with the parts underneath and in turn creates temporary dissonances. In the parts underneath, we hear Jeff with just one note. And in the other parts, we hear this. So if we put this all together, let me put it into organ mode so we can really hear these chords. So we've had these nice juicy chords setting us up for this. I mean, just wow. Jeff is the MVP here. This is the thing in the original song that immediately made me just kind of go, Wow, yeah, this is good. It's that bass line. The accuracy with which Jeff is jumping around, being percussive as well to work really well with Lane in driving the beat forward. Yeah, all round, just great. So Ashley gets the melody, not gonna lie, the casting here is good. A kind of auburn-haired lady and Caesar's hair is really similar to Felix's, that's the character's name. And we get good use of multi-tracking here. It's subtle, it's not over the top, and it's just to ensure consistent harmony, in this case in thirds, so three notes apart. We can see Ellie and Caesar are singing the two parts that we hear on the word mischievous grin. With the mischievous grin. But then the two parts continue as Caesar goes on to do his bit, his rather dramatic bit. So there are more than five voices being heard at any one time. Quite early on, and we've got Ellie using that high chest voice of his, moving towards the upper tenor ranges. No, says it looks like rain. An A flat up there. And then the next line, the words, why did he tell us, in the original song, really sticks out. This interval sounds a little bit peculiar, right? Well, it's not. It's actually one of the most standard intervals we hear all the time. It's a major third. But because of the musical context, we are not in B major. We are actually in G major, which is these notes. The first note that we heard of this interval, this one here, it's not in this scale. It's the sixth note up from G, which is this one, but it's, yeah, it's moved down, it's flattened. So how do voice play deal with this peculiarity that's sung by Caesar? <laughs> Ashley harmonizes with him to give it a bit more harmonic strength. The next standout thing is Lane's verse, which has a very, very cool build up. In the original, it's sung by a woman, but they're singing at the same pitch. Lane is the beatbox and he's now singing. So the main thing here is the rhythmic drive, how it's kept going without the beatbox. Well, Jeff's bass part, because he sings so percussively, is actually a huge, huge part. But also we hear these kind of tongue clicks going on in the background. Again, it has to be multi-tracking unless someone else is able to click their tongue whilst singing, but they haven't kept in the whole beatbox part that Lane has recorded separately whilst Lane is singing. It's fair here that the beat, for the most part, is significantly reduced. And then after Lane's very cool transitionary moment, the sound of falling sand, He's now available to give us more of a beat again, but it's pretty much the same as what we're hearing before. We get this feeling of continuity. The handling of the beat around this whole section is very, very meticulous. All right, so the next section, Jeff is portraying the character Bruno. Now, when this part comes in in the original song later on, that's my favorite part of the whole song. One reason is because of how this melody at this point works with the bass line. They complement each other really well. They have a very similar melodic arc as a whole, but they have their differences throughout the melody as well. Here, Jeff's bass line is added in underneath his melody. It's tricky to hear, but it's definitely there and it's providing this foundation both melodically and rhythmically. Seven foot frame, rats on all his back. And yeah, then everyone's singing homophonically and the beat cuts off. I think we're then expecting something to happen and we get it in Jeff dropping down. Jeff going down to this G1 off the keyboard down here. And the bit that follows, I just want to make a quick note of the rhythms in the harmonies that we hear. We get this syncopation really driving home the idea of rhythm changing it up a little bit whilst also having harmonies in there. Your 
and on the note of rhythmic changes, just after that we get this bit. I'm now thinking different rhythmically. I'm thinking in terms of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, instead of one, two, one, two, one, two. Let's let's quickly whip up some music to visualize this. So with before, with the one, two, one, two, it was like this. Now it will sound like this, and I've put the groups one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, all in their different colors. And every group has a break at the end of the group, and then it comes in back on the one. That's why I think one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. All right, and then one of the highlights. He said, he said that all of my hair would disappear. Now look at my hair. I know them feels, but it's made a bit better by the arrangement at this point. Complete homophony, as homophonic as you can physically get. Irregular rhythms, quick, tight breaks at the same point for everyone, including the beat. Yeah, quite impactful. All right, well, I am loving this so far, so let's carry on. My power would grow like the grapes that thrive on the road. He told me that the man of my dreams would be just out of reach. Betrothed to another. It's like I hear he hates I want not a sound out of you. I can hear him. Um, Bruno. Yeah, about that. Bravo, voice play. That was great. I'm so happy I watched the film beforehand as well. Great original song, seems to get better every time I listen, and voice play did it an absolute justice. All right, well, let's go over that second half then. There's some cool things in there, some funny things in there as well. From where we left off, it's an absolute huge shift in the overall feel. We've gone from very foreboding, very pensive, very minor, to now happy. We have moved from C minor to E flat major. This is our friend, the circle of fifths. This change sounds natural because every major key on the outside has a relative minor on the inside and it works both ways. We can see that C minor and E flat major, we've just moved from here to here, are relatives of each other. A quick way to work this out is that the relative minor will always be one minor third below the relative major. So C, if you move up a minor third, which is one, two, three notes, the other way is you do a triad of your minor chord, add in the seventh note, and then remove the bottom note. And now you have your relative major chord. As you can see, these two notes are shared in both of the chords. So that's why this sudden shift sounds quite natural. In the original at this point, we have high pizzicato strings. It's not actually pizzicato. Pizzicato means plucked. Instead, they're played normally, but staccato disjointed. But instead of those high strings, now we get Lane singing the bass part. They told me that the life 
of my dreams would be promised and someday really nice tone to his voice and then because of this i was naturally expecting jeff to maybe come in with a really low sustained note i was not expecting what we do get jeff do here <laughs> Me that my power would grow like the grapes. Look at that hair flowing in the wind with the flowers. It's very funny, and he does go low here. A nice juxtaposition between the aesthetic and the voice. Right, so after this, there's a very, very quiet bit really high in the background. My dreams would be just out of reach. I'd love to know who's singing that. Would it be Caesar? I've heard people say that he has a ridiculously high range. Then Jeff gets a very brief bit of melody, which I think kind of masks the textural layering that we hear in the background. It's like I hear he we have this building up of a chord, which makes Ellie's entry very natural there. Ellie has an interesting melody at this point. Hey sis, and then silence. This textural layering kind of offsets that a little bit. It's like I hear he it's the little details that go into these arrangements that really, really make the difference. Ashley puts on her glasses. Mom, Bruno. For anyone who hasn't seen the film, she is now portraying the character of the protagonist. And this section is a bit more intense. It's a nice build up that voice play do here. In the original, there's just a fairly constant driving in the background. But voice play decide to gradually increase, well, everything really, the number of parts that are singing, how long they're singing for, and of course, going up in pitch. Yeah, about that Bruno. I really need to know about Bruno. Give me the truth and the whole truth, Bruno. With Ellie going up to a top C. They're all increasing in pitch, but of course, our main man, Jeff, he does things a little bit differently around here. He goes down to that low G1 we heard earlier. Bruno. Moving in the opposite direction from everyone else, the arrangement completely opens up. And then we get these juicy chords. I'm about to play them there, a temporary harmonic release from everything else. Completely different. What do we have there on the first chord? Truth and the whole truth. with Jeff being down an octave. Bella, your boyfriend's he with Caesar going. And then we resolve to. Very Beach Boys-esque that. Anyone who doesn't know, Beach Boys are my favorite band, I think. So we go from to D flat major. And what we get here is something called a cadential 6-4. Cadential as in a cadence. All this means is that instead of arriving immediately on the chord of D flat major on notes 3 and 5, they instead arrive on 4 and 6 and then move down to 3 and 5. And all of this is why the next bit is my favourite bit of the whole song. It's a snap straight back to where we were harmonically before we had the whole major happy section, back to that relative minor from before, C minor. Pretty much completely unrelated in terms of key to where we've just been. It gives this change even more of an impact. <laughs> That's nice. Also to compare to when we heard this same melody last time. Seven foot frame rats. Everything now, the second time is just higher. Again, except for Jeff. He sings the new lowest note we've heard. Going down to an F. Down an octave from there. Because voice play are relatively limited in the number of parts that they use, they don't want to go over the top with the use of multi-tracking. They want to keep things pretty manageable, so they add in these theatrical gimmicks. The screams that we heard, the ghost effects. With a bit of studio enhancement. They're fun, they're wacky, they're not serious, and most importantly, they're different. Why I say this is because at this point in the original, my favourite part, there's just so much going on. So many different parts all at the same time. It's what makes it truly a great song, in my opinion. Every part we've heard previously, this song, by the way, it's made up of all the different characters having their own little section with different melodies. They all come together and it just works. <laughs>
but voice they still do an amazing job at creating this effect because just after that they do something which really surprised me it's ashley's part that is key here <laughs> She has those quick repeated notes. That part does not exist in the original. It's a great way at creating this effect of kind of just chaos when you are limited in numbers. And then we get the last section. I mean, just wow. <laughs> this chordal build up is great. I mean, what notes did we have there? <laughs> and then Lane's part. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? I think let's leave that there. I don't think I need to say anything else. I'll probably just be rambling. Overall, yeah, I thought that was fantastic. The arrangement, the song choice. Song choice does have to get credit as well. The set, the comedic value, the theatrical side of things. Ashley, the first woman I've heard sing with them, worked so well with them. Yeah, all round great stuff. Thank you for this request and thank you to everyone for watching. We'd really appreciate a like, subscribe and a comment. If you enjoy my content, want to support me, join the community, vote on future polls. You can do so by joining the Patreon or YouTube memberships linked below in the description and I will see you next time.